Welcome, I'm Devil Sniper, and this is episode number three of our career mode with Frank Furt. It has been such a busy time. We had a look at some potential signings in the last episode. In this episode, you will see some of the players that I have taken my time to go and research. I've been all over the place. I've been to France, I've been to Mexico, and I've stayed at, well, my new home in Germany to research some players who I think are absolutely fantastic. This was on recommendations by you guys, so hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, they all pan out, and uh, we might be able to start putting some offers in. Perhaps not this episode because I still feel we have to be very careful with our budget and I want to make sure I bring the correct players into the club. I don't want to damage the club's reputation and I want to give the club the best opportunity to get into a European football place, which is um, it's going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tough. I'm totally in awe of our first game. I'm very, very nervous. I'm hoping all the training, all my tactics are going to work out, but Hertha Berlin are not going to be a pushover. So I know we're going to be in for a tough game. And as you can see, Hertha Berlin... Won the toss, they select to stay in their home end and they take kick off. You will see us on the right hand side with Sh Chirac knocking the ball out to Jung and he is bombing down that right hand side. He is absolutely fantastic but the cross unfortunately is just not good enough. It is something we have been working on, it's early crossing in training, trying to get the boys to swing them into the back post with some real whip and venom on them but as you can see it just didn't fathom out with that first attack. But again, Jung on that right-hand side really does like to get forward. Plays a fantastic ball over the top into Kadlec. And Kadlec, ah, oh, unfortunately lacked the composure. Did he have time to take a touch and finish it? Did he not? Who knows? It was a great opportunity, a snap opportunity. He didn't take it, but the ball's played into Sebastian Rode, and Rode goes down. It looks like that was a clear-cut penalty to me. An absolute clear-cut penalty. I was raging on the touchline, but you will see touchline cam all my days, it looks like a blatant dive. I do not know what to say. We will be dealing with this situation. I will be taking him to one side and having a very firm word of him because we do not accept play acting. We do not accept players trying to win penalties that are not rightly a penalty. It's something that I've been, you know, I've been a big supporter in my career. You do not cheat in any way, shape, or form. I think it's an absolute disgrace, and he will be getting the riot act read to him. It's a great shame because he's a young lad and he's a fantastic footballer. And as I speak of a fantastic footballer, sure rock rocks my world. What an unbelievably missed time tackle! But it shows so much of the good things about him. His willingness to defend. His willingness to get stuck in. All the boys have been training so well. And so shuts the determination to get stuck in and have a right go. And mix up with the tactics that I'm trying to inbreed into them. I'm changing the tactics slightly. I will be working on the formation. But I think it's a bit too early to start changing formations at this moment. We strolled in at halftime. It was nil-nil. It wasn't the most exciting game in the world. And I think it was due to the rain. The pitch was so slippery. In certain parts it was a little bit boggy. A little bit waterlogged, and it did affect the way that the ball was moving. But the referee said it was playable, so it was all fine. But as you see, we start off the second half absolutely under the cosh, and we really have to defend very, very well, very stoutly. But thankfully, their striker, unfortunately, their big number 10, absolutely has a moment that I'm sure will haunt him for the rest of his life. The goal was gaping, and he absolutely flaps at it, which is, you know, it's just unbelievable. But I decided to make a substitution. I feel that we were getting overrun in midfield, and I wanted to switch it up, so I moved it into a 4-3-3, into a try and give us some width, to try and get that ball out wide, and as you can see, it starts to pay off as we bomb down the right-hand side, he has an opportunity to cross the ball to the back post, and he neglects to do it, goes for the shot, not going to have a go at him, because I want my players to take risks, I want my players to have a crack, but it was not a very exciting second half at all, and as you can see, our first game ends with a disappointing 0-0 draw, but I'm not going to say it's disappointing. To keep a clean sheet away from home in my first game in charge of Frankfurt, I'm extremely happy. Extremely happy. But we're not going to hang around. We're going to go straight into the next game. We are at home. Now, is it pronounced the Commerzbank Arena? Let me know in the comment section below because it's a beautiful arena. Absolutely beautiful arena. And if you didn't know, Frankfurt, uh, I believe they're like 13th or 15th in the average gates in the world, so in, in Europe, I think it is. So um, at the top, I think you've got uh, Borussia Dortmund, who average over 80,000, followed by Manchester United, etc. They're 15th. We've managed to get 49, over 49,000 people every home game through the turnstiles as an average, which is absolutely sensational. 
But my God, did we start off sloppy and slow. Dortmund down the right-hand side with Blazikowski, showing his immense strength and talent. Swings the ball in, but great defending from the boys at the back. It was really, really nerve-wracking as Dortmund were just literally coming at us at 100 miles an hour. Hummels makes a mistake on the ball. Rosenthal, who's been bought in for Kladdeck, gets the ball, starts bombing forward, plays the ball inside. It's spread again. We go for the chip to the back post, and unfortunately, it's a little bit of a lame shot at the end there. Rosenthal didn't get the good body position, didn't barge his way through, and it was unfortunate that it was not a very good finish. But the craft was fantastic. The willingness was absolutely sensational. And again, another opportunity goes begging. We have time in these situations. The boys have got to calm down. They've got to realise they can take a touch. Didn't get to the back post. They don't have to rush these opportunities. But at this moment in time, the boys seem so eager to please the fans and the new manager, myself. But they're just making rash decisions as Mayer has a fantastic opportunity. Could he have taken a touch? Could he have taken a touch? I don't think he could. I think he'd done the right thing. And it, it, it was just unlucky. Absolutely fantastic save by Wiederworld in the Dortmund goal. And again, another beautiful ball in. Wiederworld with an absolutely sensational save. And probably the miss of the season on the stroke of half time. We stroll in. Nil-nil in front of a very buoyant home crowd. They were really getting behind us. It was so sensational. The hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. I played in some of the biggest arenas in the world. I've been to Brazil. Bahia's home support was amazing. Molder's home support was amazing. But my God, Eintracht Frankfurt fans can make some noise. They really had the place a rocking. They really had the place absolutely bubbling. And a lad I have high, high hopes for is Kittel. I presume it's Kittel. I have no idea how to murder his name. I've probably just done it. But the lad is absolutely sensational. And look who Dortmund can afford to take off. Javier Hernandez, Chicharito. Who can they bring on? Who do you call when you're in trouble? You don't call Ghostbusters. You call Benzema. Oh my days, what a save from Trap. And then Trap has a moment of, I don't know, he was just delusional. I think he just had a moment where he didn't realise where he was. He tackled his own player with the ball. And we got away with it. But my God, Trapp has got to keep his concentration for 100% of the game. He can't afford that sort of rubbish. He pulls off a fantastic save. A double save onto the post. Poor clearance. And Dortmund are literally all over us. Benzema with the shot onto the post. Just wide. Dortmund follow up onto the post. And we finally clear the ball. My heart was a racing. My heart was a pumping. And Dortmund were not finished. The 90th minute just in... Injury time, fantastic defensive header onto the head of the Dortmund player. It spins up into the air and Trapp takes it, thankfully. God love you, Trapp. That was absolutely sensational. It was one of the most exciting games I had actually been a manager of. It just ebbed and flowed. Such great football. Dortmund constantly closing this down. Chances were coming thick and fast. And I honestly thought Benzema would really, really score in the latter stages. But thankfully, we defended stoutly. We'd done the business and we kept him out, which is the most important factor. So back-to-back -back draws is not the greatest start, but when you've taken on Dortmund, who are arguably the, the best or second-best team in the Bundesliga, and you've got a nil-nil draw, I'm happy with that, and I will take it all day long. Alexander, you know, he's 30 years old. He's a cam, and I, I think we could get some decent money for him, but I don't want to sell him. You know, at, at the end of the day, I'm very, very happy with the nucleus of my team, with the nucleus of my team. But while we have a look at, while I do some changes on the team, I'm going to take you to where I have been. And where have I been? Well, I went and saw Raul Jimenez. Oh, yes, I went to Mexico. This lad is six foot three. He's 22, 23 years old, right footed absolutely a tank the boy has so much power he's not the quickest but he's very agile he can get away from defenders he can shrug defenders off he's happy to go with the left foot right foot makes intelligent runs you see how he stayed on side there makes an intelligent run and then he's confident enough to push at the center back to push at the full back gets the shot across the goal unfortunately it does hit the post but one absolutely fantastic player from mexico i went to france to have a look at nolan rule and Rue is sensational. This run set, absolutely astounded me. The guy received the ball in fantastic style. He runs at the player, lunging in at him, gets away from him. And now look at his strength. The defender may get in there, but look at him. Rue is like, no, I want my ball back. And he pulls him over. Sensational. Not afraid to do a fake shot. Fantastic. Absolutely bewilders the fullback. Swings the ball in. Absolutely sensational. I'm really, really chuffed with the way he looks. And um, we could be putting bids in on these players. But Matthias Ginter, what a centre-back. Yes, some of you are going to say that's a missed time tackle. And you would be absolutely spot on. But his aggression, his position, his reading of the situation was fantastic. Yes, he just mistimed it. I can forgive him. He's 19 years old. But look how he reads that. Comes across. 
so delicately, takes the ball away, and in one foul swoop, he sets up a counter-attack. Absolutely sensational. I have high hopes for him. If we could craft a deal, I think it would be amazing for the club. But you guys will obviously have the final say. So at the end of this episode, in the comment section, do we go for Jimenez? Do we go for Rule? Do we go for Ginter? Do we go for any of the players you saw on the transfer list in the last episode? You know, do we go for Bas Dost? Even though I do believe he's he's going to be cost us an absolute fortune, an absolute fortune. But who knows? We can craft the deals. We do have Sebastian Rode, who a lot of people say, realistically, we have to get rid of him because he's not in the, at the actual team, which is fine. We shall do it, and we will see how we get on against Bayern Munich. I used to dream about cars and cars.